there, it's Pete here, and today I wanted to teach you how to actually win at Euchre and what sort of tips I've got for improving your game. So what I wanted to break down today is when should we be choosing trumps? What sort of positions affect things? Uh, what about the flipped up card? How does that change things? Should you be going it alone? And in the card play, how should we be tackling that? So first of all, when should we actually be bidding for trumps? What actually impacts my decision. So one of the key things I want to look for is, do I think my hand's offensive or defensive? So what do I mean by this? Uh, a couple of things that make a hand really offensive that makes me want to try and bid for trumps is, do I have a long trump suit? Three or four of them. I think this one's pretty easy, but uh, if you've got that, that makes your hand really good for trying to choose the trump suit, because if it's not trumps, you're not going to take any tricks. The other thing that I look for is, do I have the jacks? Uh, because the jacks in the trump suit, they take tricks. The jacks, when they're not the trump suit, they're going to lose tricks. So by choosing the trump suit, you're improving your trick taking potential there. Whereas a defensive hand is a hand with like all the aces. You're going to take tricks. You might even take three tricks pretty routinely. Uh, but you're going to take that whether you choose trumps or not. This one, I'm a lot less likely to want to try and choose trumps because I want to let the opponents pick and then I'll be defending and actually playing for two points there. The next thing I wanted to actually hit home is how valuable being the dealer and actually picking up that card in the middle and being able to toss another one away is. I think this is a fantastic edge and you should be trying to do this as often as possible. I think it's usually worth like a trick and a half because what actually happens is you get to discard your worst card, you get to pick up a trump which is usually just adding a trick to your hand and you're improving the quality of your trumps and improving the trick taking potential of all of those all at the same time. This is a massive advantage and should not be turned down lightly. If I'm on the fence about whether I pick up that card or not to choose trumps, I am going to be picking it up. Uh, I really dislike trying to <laughs> let it go and give up that advantage. Now, obviously there's hands where you just don't want to be trying to take half the tricks because you're just, your hand's terrible. It's just not going to happen. Uh, but you should be really aggressively trying to uh, pick that up uh, when you get the advantage of picking up that card and tossing one away. The next thing I wanted to break down is the, sort of the effect of the different positions. What pros and cons are there? So in first position, left of the dealer, one of the cons, which is for you and also third position, is if you tell them to pick up trumps, they get the advantage I just talked about before. But one of the pros of being in first position is if everyone passes, you get first selection of what the alternative trump suit actually is. And this is really valuable. So one of the times I look for it is, let's say I'm on the fence about, do I make the dealer pick up the trump suit or do I pass? If you're in first position, it's really good to actually pass here if you have another alternative suit that you're pretty close between, maybe it's slightly worse. I would be passing just because if they pick up the trump suit, you're now in the defense and you're playing for two points. If they don't pick it up, you get first choice and you get to choose your slightly inferior one, but you get to negate dealer's huge advantage of picking up that card. So that's really, really valuable. Second position, I think this is a really interesting position. Uh, one of the pretty challenging, what I try and look for is can I help my partner pick up that card? Because you, I really hate my partner passing that up. And sometimes they have their doubts. So if I've got a trick, a trick and a half in my hand, and I think that trumps are okay, I will aggressively be telling partner to pick it up just because I don't want partners to be in their dilemma of they're like, do they do or not, if we're both in this marginal range, I want partner to be picking it up. So in second position, I'll be telling partner that's trumps quite aggressively. And I think it's second position's job to really help their partner out in that spot when they have that advantage. Third position, this is probably the worst position. Uh, there's not a lot going for it, uh, except what I call baiting the uh, dealer into picking it up. Um, but I'll touch on more of that later. Being the dealer, this is fantastic. I always love being the dealer. Take advantage of it when you can. Be really hesitant to actually pass up uh, that middle card. Uh, the next thing I wanted to talk about was the flipped up card and the value of that. So uh, how, if it's a nine versus a jack actually changes things. So if the flipped up card is a jack or an ace, 
as dealer, I'm even more pushing to actually try and pick it up. In fact, I would go as far as I almost never toss away a jack because that's just, that's a guaranteed trick. It's huge. So I'm like, my hand has to be really bad to actually want to pass up a jack. Um, whereas if it's a nine, I'm much more inclined to pass that away. So if I'm on an edge, make sure you look at what that middle card is. But the other way of thinking about it is, let's say that you're in third position and the flipped up card is a jack, you really want, and you really want that to be the trump suit. You can just pass and dealer will almost always take it. So then you're defending and again, you're playing for two points. So that's what I call baiting where uh, you're sort of expecting dealer to try and take that advantage. Third position, you don't need to push dealer to do it. If they don't, remember that your side gets the advantage if dealer doesn't pick it up. Uh, so be if you're thinking about making dealer pick it up, check out what the middle card is. If it's a jack, they're probably gonna do it anyway. The next thing I wanted to talk about is when should you be going it alone? I think that most people don't go it alone enough. Uh, obviously, if you think you can take all five tricks, you should do that. But I think you should also be doing it uh, when you have certain three and you expect that you're gonna get four and just if a certain card is missing, you'll actually get five. This is very common for me to want to go it alone. And that's because the four points you get for taking all five tricks is worth that little bit of a gamble. The, the hand types that I like to go it on alone, uh, I'll give you a couple of samples. One of them might be you've got three trumps, including the two jacks, and you've got king queen of another suit. Now, if you go it alone, you might your king queen might lose to an ace. But if your partner had that ace, they're not actually contributing to you and you actually get four points and four points can really make or break a game of euchre. So I think you should be going it alone more aggressively. Another sample one might be you've got four trumps, including the jacks and an outside king. Again, you don't need, like if your partner's got the outside ace, it's not helping you. I would even consider it with queens. I, I think it's something that I wanna be more aggressive doing, but you wanna make sure you've got that certain three tricks. So you're banking that one point, having a chance at uh, four. Then the next thing I wanted to touch on is card play. How should we be tackling the card play? Should we be drawing trumps? Should we be trying to cross rough? Uh, so one of the things that I'm looking for is how long I think someone's trumps are. So if dealer picks up the card, um, they are very likely to have long trumps and maybe that's a good time to try and uh, draw trumps so that your random other cards don't get trumped. If you think both people just have a couple of trumps, then maybe going for a cross rough is a better approach. Another thing to look for is what are your other cards? If you've got aces outside, then maybe drawing trumps is good so that you allow your aces just to win. Or if you've just got queens and jacks, going for a cross rough is probably good because your outside cards are less likely to actually win. Other th key things is if third position tells a dealer to pick up the trump suit, uh, they have a really good hand. I will routinely be leading trumps in that situation. Another thing worth noting is that if dealer picks up a card, they're much more likely to have a void in one of the suits because they get their discard as well. So if you want to cross rough and you're the partner of the dealer, that's a better situation compared to if it just got passed round and no one got to pick up that card. The final thing I wanted to touch on in the card play is uh, when you can potentially trump a suit and you're in second position, should you do it? So the opponent's lead a jack and you can trump in. I quite often don't if I can actually create a shortage in a different suit instead. And the reason being is your partner might just have the ace. And if you just trump in, you might be just effectively trumping partner's trick. Whereas if you can create this shortage in a different suit, your partner may or may not get a chance to win, but you've also just transferred your ability to trump into another suit, which is a lot better. If you're in second position and they're leading an ace, then I'm much more keen to actually trump in there. So they're my tips for how to win Euchre. Just a little recap. The first one is, I like to think of my hand, is it offensive or defensive? Do I have the jacks or long trumps for choosing trumps? Uh, if I've only got uh, aces that's defensive, I'd wanna try and pass it off. I really wanted to reiterate how valuable picking up that card in the middle actually is. You wanna be doing this very aggressively. Uh, then the breakdown of the different positions. First position, uh, 
you, your cons are you get to give dealer a card if you want them to pick up trumps. But if no one wants to pick it up, you get first choice. And this is huge. You should be using that a lot. But if you're in first position, I very like to try and pick the trump suit if it gets passed around to me. If I think that there's something that I think could be beneficial. So be aggressive in that position. Second position, really key to try and help your partner uh, to judge when they should be picking up trumps. If you think it's at all useful, help them out. Give them the, yep, we should be going for it. Uh, third position, pretty terrible terrible position, but maybe you can bait the uh, dealer into uh, picking it up when there's a uh, jack on the board. Fourth, I love being the dealer. It's fantastic. Pick up that card as often as you can. Then the flipped up card, if it's a flipped up jack, almost always take it. It is super valuable to try and go do that. Then I wanted to touch on going it alone. Be more aggressive going it alone. You don't need to have all five tricks. If you've got four tricks or like a guaranteed three, consider giving it a shot. And then the last thing I touched on is when should you draw trumps or when should you cross rough um, based on who do you think actually has long trumps or not. And also if you're in the second position and you can trump, maybe you shouldn't do that if you can also uh, just create a shortage somewhere else. Anyway, they're my tips on how to actually win at Euchre. Thanks all for watching and we'll see you next time.